Hi there, my name's Christina and today I'm going to show you how to make a fabric mask. I'm making these in anticipation to the fact that we are coming out of lockdown and I think that we might well be asked to wear a facial covering of some type and any facial covering is good but if you wanted an actual mask and you can make them yourself this is how um, I'm doing it and I've looked at several patterns on the internet and combined a few of them. The, one, the thing that's different about this one is it's got a nose wire here and it's got a slot at the top which you can take the wire in and out. It's not fixed in there so if you wanted to take the wire out for washing you could do that. Um, also um, it's got a filter pocket so it's three layers of fabric so it gives you a bit more an extra couple of layers of protection but you can also make your own filters. Um, there's lots of things being suggested. I would say that anything that's absorbent of your breath, so even if it was like Kleenex kitchen roll, a wad of it folded up into several, so it's a nice thick wad, um, and then you can throw that after each use and then wash the mask, I'd say at least daily. Um, a quick disclaimer, these are not going to protect you like an N95 mask from a hospital. Um, and in fact, unless you keep these clean and wash them daily and change the filters, they will not protect you at all. However, they will be, when you're in a crowded space, um, which is when I was probably think we'll be asked to wear these, although we don't know yet, they should have some value to um, stop breath travelling, like as if you're putting a uh, hand up when you cough or sneeze. It will just catch droplets. So that's why filters are important. I am actually ordered a roll of pond liner, pond filter liner which um, I believe can be washed I haven't got it yet but I'm, I'm going to be cutting that up and putting that in I've ordered the um, 8 mil pond filter um, material because that's got no chemicals in it some of the things that people are suggesting have got chemicals in so may not be a good idea really um, especially if you don't know the other thing about this one is um, it's got grooves so you can fill put your own elastic through so this one is one that will go the two pieces of elastic, one behind the head and one behind my neck. Um, I like this design because I used to be a nurse and I've got quite small ears so when wearing a mask and I only had to do it for short periods of time when in rooms sometimes, um, they, they my ears would get sore or they wouldn't fit very well so for me I prefer the longer elastic. You can actually put shorter elastic in. This one I've made which is only, this is made out of pyjamas, my, my children's um, pyjamas. So you, can, you cut one inch long strips of it, as long as you can, I use the trouser leg, um, and then just pull it and it makes a cord. You don't even have to sew it, but it's very soft, like pyjama trousers are for kids. And you can use it either as a tie or, um, you know, short ones. I would suggest if you're making them for kids, you just do the ear tags because you don't want long pieces of um cord on anything that's going near a child um, and certainly these are nice and soft for that or elastic would be a good idea and you can tie these and make them then pull the knots taut and then pull the knot through so that they uh, don't look unsightly and aren't uncomfortable okay so all of these need to be made from 100 um, from 100% yeah, cotton because they need to be washed at 60 degrees so when you get your fabrics wash them first in the washing machine so that if they shrink they've already done it before you start using them and you're also going to need some lining fabrics as well or some different fabrics so you know which side out you're wearing the mask because you don't want to get the mask on the wrong way um, so these masks are made from this so you want one 8 by 10 inch of cotton and two 6 by 8 inch of cotton and then for the um, they need to be pre-washed to 60 degrees and you need something for a nose wire, which needs to be four inches for an adult one or three inches for a child sized one. Smaller children will only need like up to about five, will only need a two and a half inch nose wire. Um, so that's that bit. Let's move those. So first of all, once you've cut out your um, pattern and I've made my own. So I put these on the fabric and then cut round them to make it easier or my husband's actually made me some wooden boards now so that because I'm cutting out a lot so that I can cut them out easy but a piece of paper are fine just pin them on and cut round them once you've done that you need to iron them so they're nice and flat okay so iron make sure they're all flat the iron is going to be your best friend 
So once you have done that part, so you get your pieces of fabric like so. And what you need to do is iron a half inch hem along them and do that on both pieces of the smaller along the long side. Once you've done that, you need to lay them down. So it's, sorry, once you've done that, you need to stitch along the edges. So running stitch along the long side and I've done a half inch, half inch hem and quarter inch stitch from the edge on each one. So do that on both the smaller pieces. Then you lay the nice piece of fabric down so that it's nice side up and you line up your smaller pieces so you, you want these nice bits and the nice side, so nice sides together so you lay them down in the middle of the long edge and you do that on each side of the long edges and then pin them in position so they're nicely in the middle otherwise you're going to end up with wonky side to your mask and one bit will be a bit more bulky so it'll be difficult to put the elastic in. So just pin that quickly. So what you'll have is like so. Once you've done that then you need to do a running stitch starting from the start of the lining fabric down to the other end of the lining fabric on both sides. Okay. So that will then look like, where is it? Here we are. It's the same. So then it will look like this. So you've got your lining. Once you've done that, you need to go back to your ironing board and iron it. So you need to turn it out the other way and iron your seams open. If you don't do that, it won't get a very good finish. So just Quickly iron them open and then fold them over. You see what I'm doing? And so you end up with that. So you've got your nice side there, and then you've got your nice sides there. And then once you've done that, we're ready to make the nose slot. So I tend to pin this in place so it doesn't keep on opening up and then fold it fold along the long side fold it in half so you know where the center of your nose is going to be which will be here and then I like to sew on the nice side so let's do that in that bit and then for an adult one, it's you need a four inch nose wire slot, which will have a four inch nose wire. So if you measure from the center, two inches each side, and then put your pins in, and then we can start to sew the nose slot. So that's one. And two and depending on how wide your nose wire is I mean this piece of wire is six millimeters which is what just over a uh, quarter of an inch is it? there we are it's about seven eight it's about oh, is it yeah it's about quarter of an inch just over quarter of an inch so you need to sew about a quarter of an inch in so if you can see my pins so from the edge you'll need to sew a quarter of an inch or so in just a bit bigger to make the slot big enough for whatever you're using a pipe cleaner or um, a nose um, wire and then so we start from here and we'll sew down to here and then we'll turn them turn and go across to the other pin and then this bit we're leaving open so that we can take in the wire. I would double stitch at the edges because if you don't they're not strong enough and they might the wire might break through and we don't want anyone being hurt or anything. So 
Oh, here's one I've already started, so we'll just sew along here. And it's quite um, quick to do. You can just go back and reinforce the ends. That's it. So that's that one. So now we've got our little nose slot. Oh, it's a bit cold, that one. Trim off any excess thread as you go along. I should have said that because I've been doing them pre-made so it doesn't take <laughs> forever to prepare for this. <laughs> as I say, I'm not a sewer. <laughs> not really. So that's it. And then take the pins out. Now, the next bit is to make the pleats because otherwise, this is the way I do it anyway so it doesn't get too bulky. If I, I have done it the other way but it seemed quite bulky. I'd leave the pin in here for now but don't forget to remove it because otherwise the, this will flop open. Now the way I do it is I have just have two fingers there and I fold it down and then I fold it down again. And then I fold it down again so like so so we end up with four little pleats three would be equally fine you just got to make sure they're equidistant and that's the bit that's the tricky bit you can actually fold the fabric in half and then fold it in half again and then it's you can do it that way as well but to be honest I find it's about the same time this is the faff bit. There we go. It's more like it. So it's like that. I'm just going to iron that. Just give it a little press. Make sure they're equal on each side. And then I've got a pin just to stop it from coming undone too much. side as well. Oops. Okay, so now I trim where's my scissors gone? I've lost them. Well I'll put my scissors. I can't find them. Right, well I won't trim them this time but I normally oh I've trimmed already. <laughs> So I trim these corners off here just so they're not too bulky and I do that to each of the corners otherwise I found it's hard to twist turn it over. Must have prepared this one earlier. <laughs> So, because you need a slot big enough for your elastic, if you make it too tight you won't be able to get the elastic through and I'm using 6mm or 8 mil elastic depending what I can get my hands on and so I'm running out so I'm not having to use cords some of the time but if you make a nice big um, groove there we go and it's a bit difficult this bit to do because it's quite a thick bit of fabric so I tend to just hold it if I can because it's not very wide and then sew running stitch again, but I go up twice because, um, I can you see that? I go up the fabric twice because um, it needs to be really, really secure. This poor little machine doesn't like this. I go to the end and then turn it round and go back again. It just makes it more neat and a nice finish on the ends as well. Oop, doesn't sound good. So that's one end. So again, you do the same to the other end as well. So that's the one done. And I just need to trim off all the bits and do the same at the other end as well and then basically that is your mask now I've 
got some, this is one I've made earlier, obviously. <laughs> and I've got one of these little gadgets. I don't know if anyone's got this, but it's great. So you can stick this through, or if you haven't got this, the safety pin works really well as well. So if you stick this through the hole, oops, if I can get it through, hang on, <laughs> that's good, isn't it? Got it stuck. Put it the other way. Oh, I'm not doing very well, am I? That's it. Then you can pull through whatever, say this is your bit of elastic. You can pull it through really well. That's the thing, that's it. Without any problems. And then, like I say, I actually prefer... I pulled it right through. Anyway, you get my idea. You do, <laughs> if I do it again, I pulled it right through that time. It's because it's a short piece of elastic, really. Um, yeah, I prefer um, the longer elastic because of my ears. But if it's a child, I would say this sort is better because there's no risk of it being too long and causing risk to them. The long cord. Okay, and then you just tie it off so you can give it to the person. Once they've tied the knot tightly, and if you tie the knots this way, so pull them and do them like so, they get really tight if you pull them tight. And once they're tight, you can actually put the knot inside so it's not going to rub on your ears or anything like that. Okay, um, is there anything else to tell you? I think that might be all of it. Child size ones, um, if you use for the main, so a six to 10 year old, if you use one six by eight, and then the same size template, but the other way round, to make your two pieces of lining fabric out, out of, so that will be six by four. That makes a mask the right size for a six to ten year old. And for a smaller child than that, you don't need to use them under two, apparently, at least two, I think it will be. But over over two, so twos to fours, then you're going to really need um, a, a seven, a six by seven, and a th whatever the half of that is for the lining fabric. And the nose wires on a smaller child would be two and a half inches for a, a four-year-old child and a three-inch one for a six to ten-year-old. Okay, I think that's all to tell you. Um, happy mask making and uh, let me know how you get on. Take care.